What's up YouTube? It is your boy JB and we are here today with a review for The Shy Season 4 Episode 3, The Girl from Chicago. Now you guys may notice I'm a little sweaty right about now. It is hot as hell here in Texas already. I just walked outside and came back in and now I'm in a pool of sweat. So before we get into the review, if you guys are watching this video or any other video on the channel, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, stop taking me out on dates and not paying for it, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell button so you guys are aware of when I drop anything else, and share the video, you guys. With that all being said, without further ado, let's go ahead and just talk about this shot, shall we? All right, you guys, I'm not really sure what it started up with this week, so I guess we'll just go in order of my notes. So let's talk about Tiffany, Emmett, and Jada. So we see Tiffany and Emmett. So Tiffany is still hooking up with um, Dante. You know, they're still doing this whole open marriage thing. Tiffany with Dante. Emmett with some girl we don't know. So Tiffany is getting, you know, her, her you know, her, her, her region, you know, messed with by Dante. He down there going down, he's downtown. And, you know, um, Emmett has a girl going downtown on him as well. There's a stark comparison between the two. Emmett doesn't seem like he's enjoying what he's getting. Whereas Tiffany, she is. So then we later see them <clears throat> and they're talking about their relationship. So, and we'll talk about that a little bit later because it'll tie in with Keisha. I'm not talking about Keisha just yet. So Emmett is asking, what are the rules when it comes to this whole situation with him and Tiffany? And Tiffany says there are to be no, she said her words, no bitches in the house or in our car. And Emmett was like, well, this is my car. And you know, he's, you know, for him, she also wants, well, for her, she wants the women to know that he's married. He's like, that's kind of going to be hard. Like, what woman is going to want to mess with a married man? If you find a woman that's interested in an open relationship, then maybe that one. But I got where he was coming from. So, and she doesn't want to know who he's fucking. So, she wants him to keep it tight when it comes to it. So, then his his thing was he wants her, he doesn't want, you know, Dante. She says, uh, no off limit so what you want me out here taking you know getting dick from um random different niggas and stuff so he lets it he let it be so then later in the episode we see emmett emmett and the little boy they went over to jada's place and suede is there and you know emmett's like what the fuck man he's like you know he was trying to figure he was like are y'all telling about to tell me y'all getting married like what's going on and then he goes inside and jada is in the rest in the bathroom and she's throwing up and Emma's like, oh, mama, please don't tell me you're pregnant about this nigga. And she says, no, she has cancer. So then we see Emmett. Emmett went back home to Tiffany. And Tiffany looked at Emmett and she's like, is everything, what's wrong? Emmett, he's like, how do you know something's wrong? She said, I can just look at you and tell. And then he just breaks down and starts crying. I don't know if he, you know, eventually ever told her. I'm, I'm pretty sure he's going to tell her that Jada has cancer. But in that scene, he didn't say anything. He was just crying in her arms um let's move on you guys all right you guys so next what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna mix together tracy duda imani and trick i'm gonna mix them all together honestly their storylines don't go in with anybody so far but i'm just gonna mix them together so we see tracy you guys remember last episode tracy has sex with duda and rose was there watching so the next morning, Tracy's waking up and she's, you know, getting ready to do the walk of shame, basically. And Rose is like, congrats. And she was like, congrats for what? Because you fucked the mayor. I'm like, is that a huge accomplishment? But, okay, I mean, I guess if you say congratulations on fucking the mayor, I mean, I guess that's, I guess in your book that's an, an accomplishment. But okay, whatever. I'm not going to knock it. So she was like, as as Tiffany, not Tiffany, as Tracy was getting ready to leave, Rose was like, you know, there are protesters downstairs, so you might, you you know, you might want to just hold off on that one, you know, just grab some breakfast, cook, you know, the cook made a, us a good breakfast, sit down and have it, so Tracy sits down. So then later in the episode, I was confused, because Duda had Tracy trying on some clothes, because he wants her to introduce him somewhere, and she's like, what about your wife? And he was like, yeah, it might look good when, for my wife to say things about me, but it would look better coming from a community leader. Hmm, I just heard a noise. But yeah, he was like, it, it would look better coming from a community leader, I guess. 
So then let's move over to um, Imani and Trig. So you guys remember in the last episode with Imani that the girl that Nuck took to her shop, she wanted help getting away from Nuck. So the girl and Imani are at a, a corner store and Imani has some things that she's already picked out in a basket for her. And she hands the girl, she also hands the girl um, a burner phone. So they're supposed to meet up somewhere later that night and that's why she got for the burner phone so that way she can reach her. So then we later see Imani as she's waiting for the girl and you know with the burner phone she calls but it keeps going to voicemail. It went to voicemail so she was like fuck. So then we see Imani. Now here's where she had me confused. Like why are you going to this whole, so she went to the community outreach center where Tracy and um, Trigger working. And she's going off on Tracy about not protecting the women in the community and more specifically the women at the trap house. And Tracy's like, well, we're already trying to do something. It just takes some time. And then Trey comes over there. He's like, you know, hold on. Maybe I can go and quietly talk to Nuck. And he might says, yeah, you go quietly talk to him and try to fix this situation or I will do it loud as fuck. I'm like, okay, money. I'm I think you're getting a little bit in over your head at this point. Like, I really do. Because they, I mean, the police, it's very little that Tracy and um, and Trig can do. They're not the police. They can't get a warrant. Like, there's very little, their hands are literally tied. So I don't know what, I mean, I guess Imani is expecting for Trig to use his street, his street, his street hustle, whatever. I don't know. So then we do see Trig. He pulls up on the and he's asking about Trinity. And Nuck says, tell your bitch to mind her business. His word is not mine. So then Trig pulls his gun out on Nuck. And Nuck's people pull his gun out. And Trig was like, nigga, you know I'm not afraid to die. So I don't know what happened after that. But we do see Trig as he went home with the burner phone. He hands it to him and he says, did you give this to her? And she was like, yes. And then he told her that, you know, they had found her body somewhere on, you know, in a ditch or something like that. Damn. Because the girl wants to get away from you, you just kill her? That's fucked up. Really fucked up. But let's move on. All right, you guys. So let's move over to Dre, Nina, Kev, and Keisha. So Dre, Nina, and Kevin, they are at a therapist, and they're talking about his drinking problem. And the therapist asks Kevin, does he believe he has a drinking problem? Kevin says no. And, I mean, he's too young to know if he has a drinking problem. So... This whole family is going through a whole lot. Dre is helping Jada, unbeknownst to Nina. And Nina is just suspicious of Dre. Keisha's pregnant, trying to figure out where she's gonna, who she's going to give her baby to. Kevin is still dealing with the shit from the cops. Like, they all, I mean, the whole family just needs to be in therapy at this point. So, Kevin tells the therapist that he feels like Dre and Nina are all over him. And they were like, if you let, if, if you gave us reasons to trust you and believe you when you say you're going to be wherever you're going to be, then maybe we could loosen up. And, you know, she asked, the therapist asked, is that something that you can do for your parents? And he says, yeah. And the thing with Nina, I, I actually get 100% where Nina's coming from. Nina is just in a position where, you know, Keisha got kidnapped last season and she's just terrified when they leave the house that, she might get a phone call that one of them is dead. And I, I, you know, I get where Nina's coming from 100%. So then we see Keisha. Keisha is meeting another potential family for this baby. And the people already have some kids that they've already adopted. And Keisha's like, how many kids are y'all planning to adopt? They said, if, if you okay it for us, this, your baby, this would be the last one. And I'm like, oh no. And then they really threw me off when she when they were talking about God. When a guy got up and said, you know, um, it was God that made you keep the baby or something like something to that effect. And I was like, God, Keisha's like, God didn't have nothing to do with this. And it was in that moment when I was like, oh, these are the devout, overtly religious Christians. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know about that one. So then we see Keisha. Keisha went to um, Smokey's. And she was, you know, talking to Tiffany about, you know, the couple, saying that she cannot leave her baby with them. <laughs> and I do like how Coles, Keisha, and um, and uh, Tiff have gotten over the over the last season. 
So then Emmett comes over there to the to the table with a stank ass attitude. What y'all talking about? Not you, nigga. So um, this is where we got into the talk about their you know their open relationship because Tiffany told Emmett that she knows a girl that he fucked because she worked with her and the girl was spreading rumors about her and she said she doesn't want girls at the house I'm being nice and he you no know, that's when he told her he wasn't cool with her fucking Dante so then we see Keisha so Keisha goes to look for Octavia Matthews and that is Tabitha's character so her you know Keisha's like you know can you tell me about her and so the reception was like you know she's an, a good person you know she when my mother died and my father had lost his job she paid for the funeral and so much so many other things and i was like oh keisha so she is a good person it's just that her marriage didn't work out which we can't blame her for that so then you know she goes in and she notices that it looks like she so she went to her office and she was looking at the build, things that she was building and so you know keisha talked to her and then they were getting ready to go for lunch and as they were getting ready to go for lunch that's when keisha started having pains so they get Keisha to the hospital and come to find out Keisha, she, it was just Braxton Hicks, but she also has some very high, her blood pressure is really high. So the doctor tells her that he wants to induce her labor and Octavia was like, hold, pump your brakes, brother. Like, can we get a second? Like, you know, no, that's not what we want to do. And in that moment, she gave a very motherly, angst, you know, her, her, her motherly instincts kicked in. So... Okay, so let's move over to Nina. Well, Dre. So Dre was with Jada while she was getting her chemo. Nina called and she turned and then Dre turned her phone off and Dre told Jada, like, Jada, you got to figure something. Like, you got to tell Emmett. Like, this is putting a wrench in my marriage at this point. So let's move back over to the hospital real quick. So Octavia asked, you know, um, Keisha, what did she eat? What did she eat? During, during the day and sounded like whatever she ate had a lot of sodium in it so she's like let's just get you some water so they got her some water and they you know they were able to get her blood pressure down so we don't have to do we don't have to induce her labor at this point so nina once again when they left the hospital well, actually at the hospital she calls dre and it goes to her voicemail so keisha had actually told um octavia that she was the one so Octavia feels, how did I get that mixed? Oh, they, she felt that they should have got a second opinion at one point before making any decisions. And then that's when she suggested the water to bring her blood pressure down. And then that's when Keisha told her that she was the one. So we see Nina, she's at home and Dre comes in. She was upset with Dre about turning her phone off. And Dre was like, you know, when I'm in my meetings, I have to turn my phone off. So Dre was able to smooth it over, but it's gonna get worse next week because when they were in bed, you know, um, Dre's phone went off and it was Jada. And Jada sent a text message saying, thanks for keeping our secret. And Nina read that. Huh. I'm pretty sure Nina's gonna jump to conclusions that she's having an affair with Jada. But if you know that your wife has been friends with her for years, that's gonna be a that's gonna be a tricky one. Well, let's alright, guys. Let's wrap this up talking about Gemma and Jake and Kevin. So Jake and Gemma, you guys remember in the last episode she interviewed him. He went up, you know, he was cussing on t on the on the camera. So they're in trouble. So dude, I was dude, I was there. Honestly, as I keep saying. Gemma annoys me. I just can't put it any other way, but she annoys me. So, Jake does have to apologize for what he said on the show, but what they're going to do is they're going to pull her show because they say it incites violence. And she's like, that's bullshit, which I, I will give her that. It is bullshit. So then we see Jim and them, and they're staging a walkout for the next, you know, for the next day during third period. And Kevin tells him, like, this looks silly. He can't do that because, you know, he just made 
um, Dre and Nina a promise, so he wants to follow through with his promise to, you know, regain their trust once again. So then we see Gemma and Jake as they're leaving the Flyers, and then Kevin asks them if they need help, and, oh, this is going to be the beginning of the end of Jake, Gemma, and Kevin. Like, I get being woke. I really do. But at this point, it, for me, when it comes to Gemma, Gemma is just putting me to sleep. <laughs> She's putting me to sleep very fast with this whole revolution talk. And then you got the one little white girl in the corner that wants to be down with everybody. So then we see Jake and Gemma, and they do their walkout. They're the only people who get up and walk out besides the little white girl, um, Dakota. So... Jake has come, they feel like Kevin has gotten in other people's ears to not do the walkout. So Jake was like, I got an idea. So Jake goes and pulls the fire alarm. Him and Gemma run and the little woke Dakota, she's going to stay in and be the, you know, the human shield or human body, whatever you want to call it. So then we see Kevin, he's with Papa and, you know, he, he, Papa tells him, stop denying your queen and putting your knees before hers. And Kevin's like, I always put her before me. And I need, I need to do something for me this one time. And then she ghosts me. And Kevin showed all the text messages where Gemma has literally just left him on red. So Papa's like, why don't you come on my show? And, you know, Kevin was like, no. So then he decided to go on Papa's show. And it was the comment section of Papa's show for me. Who is this kid? Like, we love you, Papa. It was so many different comments in there. I cracked up laughing the whole entire time that I was looking at it. So Kevin does apologize to Gemma for not walking out. And once again, those comments were a mess. They were hilarious. Papa should turn his comments off. So then we see Jake and Gemma and they are at, what well, it looked like a little diner and things are starting to heat up with both of them because she kisses him and he kissed her back. I'm like, oh shit. Like this is your home, this is your boy and that's his girl. It's going to be a whole big mess. So Kevin calls Gemma, and now Gemma thinks about Kevin. She's like, oh, my God, what are we going to do? I'm like, tell him the truth. He's going to find out eventually, and that's going to be a mess. I hope he beats, I really hope he beats Jake's ass. Keeping it real with you, hope he beats Jake's ass. But that's a review, you guys. Um, like this video. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell button so you guys are aware when I drop anything else. Share this video, and until the next one, stay safe. Um, take care of yourselves. Remember, wash your hands, wear your mask or not. Whichever one you choose to do, be safe and doing so. Be blessed, you guys, and I'll see you guys later. I may have repeated that stuff, but if I did, you know the gist. I'll see you guys later. Bye, guys.